Hi everybody. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create HP Edge Printing and also HP Spine Printing. Now, HP Edge Printing, I don't know if you've saw if you've seen it before, but HP Edge Printing is this uh, cool feature. As you can see, the book has many pages, and then uh, within those pages, you can you can browse through a, a unique image. And every page get uh, a little fraction of the big image, and once printed, you can see the full image. Uh, this is really cool and and very good for uh, for GCP customers, of course, uh, who cr who are creating journals, magazines, etc. But spine printing, which is the uh, ability to print on the spine of the book, something like that. As you can see, these are 100 uh, books which are stacked together and they're, they, they're getting a full unique image. Now, this is, uh, of course, not just for GCP. This will work for labels and packaging as well, especially packaging when you have boxes and you want to stack them together to get one complete image. So I'll, I'll show you how to create this uh, and uh, you can see how easy and nice it is. So I'll go to InDesign and I want to create uh, my brochure. I'll create a new document. It's a, an A4 document. And I want, uh, let's say I want one page because it's VDP. One thing I want to do before that, I want to add bleed. So I'll add two millimeters of bleed. And now I can create my channel. So in order to create a channel in Designer, I need to create a database. So I'll go to the data fields, to the counter, and I know that I want uh, 120 pages in my document. So I'll create 120 records, and I'll create a channel. I'll create this channel. It's a, an image channel. I'll create an image frame all over. And now I will make this channel to be a multi-page channel. Now, multi-page fi uh, file is uh, able to take multi-page PDF and just bring them here. So I have a multi-page file. I will select the PDF file. I have it in journal pages, which has a PDF with 120 pages. And once I do that and click OK on this, I can see that once I preview this, I can see all of the pages, of course, all of them look the same. But this is just a filler. Now I want to create the edge channel here on the side. So I'll create a frame. Now, please uh, take into consideration that every time that I'm creating a channel, I'm doing it horizontally. I'm doing it on its uh, zero degrees. So I have this channel. I want it to be the, the size of this uh, A4 uh, standing uh, point, uh, the portrait point, which is 297 millimeters. So I'll have it as 297 millimeters on three millimeters. And I can create this as a channel as well. Now, once I do that, I will go into Modify Image Channel. I'll select a dynamic image similar to what I do when I select HP Mosaic. But here I will select HP Edge Printing. And I'll go to the Settings and I'll edit it. Once I do that, the uh, HP Edge Printing dialog opens up. Oops, sorry, it's on another screen. And you can see that I have all the images here. Now, uh, one thing I didn't do, I didn't select the Assets folder. So I'll cancel this for a second because I won't see any images here. Okay, cancel. And I'll go to the Assets folder. Select the Assets folder that I want to use. This is the one. And I can go back to the channel again. This will be a dynamic image, edge printing, settings, and edit. Okay. 
Now I can see all the images here and I want to select the journal pages or sorry, I want to select the middle one because I want to create the edge. And now I can see this edge that I created, I pre-created it. I know that I want it as a sort of like a 20 millimeters uh, and I want it to be divided into 120 pages like my pages count. And basically that is it. You can see all the, the uh, variations that I will, I will get here. I will save this. I'll call it edge middle page. Okay. And when I preview this, you can see that I get a fragment of the the big image. Now, pay, uh, please take into consideration that this image is being dragged. So it doesn't really matter if even if I have 10 millimeters, I will only see one millimeter of an image, but then it will be spread on the entire 10 millimeters. Now, when this is set, I can simply take this, I'll rotate it to 90 degrees, and I can put it in the correct position. So I want it to be on the bleed, right? One millimeter will be inside. So when this is cut, I will see the image, and I want it to be in the middle. This is the middle one. I'll do the same things for the top and bottom. Let's do it real quick. Again, I'm creating an horizontal channel. This will be 210 on three millimeters. Create another channel. This will be, again, a dynamic one with edge printing. I'll edit it. But here, I'll select the top image. Again, this is divided into 120 different variations. Save this. This would be the edge top. I can then put it where it needs to be. And in the middle. And the one, the last one is, of course, the uh, bottom one. I'll just duplicate this. I'll go to the channel. I'll edit it. I can select the bottom one. Again, it's already set to 120. I'll save this as the edge bottom because I don't want to delete the top one. This will be edge bottom. And basically, that is done. Once I preview this, I get all the images from all three sides. And I'm ready to go. Although my top one got a little corrupted here. Let's see why. Whoops, sorry, I didn't save it. Kind of did something wrong here. When I duplicated it, I actually just took it and didn't duplicate it. But you get the drift. Now it'll be OK. So my channel. Okay. I'll take the channel. I'll just simply change the template to the edge top. Edge top. Okay. Okay. So this is it. Once I have this, I can preview this. Hopefully it will look okay. Yep, all the channels work. And I can then uh, create a job. I can create a PDF. Now, please uh, take in mind that when you create this, you need to do the imposition as a stack and collate because you want all the pages to be one on top of the other. So don't try to create any other impositions because then it will be uh, problematic to find which page goes where. So do a cat and collate. All the, the 
assets will be one on top of the other. And once you cut it, you'll see all the images as one big image. Now I want to create the spine for this book. So I'll create a spine. Let's just close this and this as well. I'll open this document over here. Oh, I have missing sources. Let's find them. Links back in front. OK, let's relink it. This is the back. We'll find it. It will find the front as well. OK, and I'll even do uh, display mode as high quality display. Now, edge printing, as I said, oh, sorry, spine printing, as I said, will also work for uh, labels and packaging. So this is also available in Illustrator. I'm doing this in InDesign just because uh, I started working and, and uh, I'll continue with it. So what I have here is basically um, a document. I have the back and front of the book. It's the cover. I have a name here. I have a database which says, uh, hi, Andrea, surprise me, hi, Marcus, hi, Guy, etc. But now I want to add the spine here. So what I'll do is exactly like I did in, sp in edge printing. I'll create a spine. This will be 297 on 20 millimeters. I'll create the channel. In this channel, I'll create dynamic image and I'll select HP edge printing as well. Now, this is very important because uh, spine printing is not a dynamic on its own. Once I have this, I have the edge printing. I'll go to settings. I'll edit it. Oops, I didn't select the assets folder again. Now, shame on me. Let me go and do this. Select assets, edit channel, dynamic, edge printing, settings, and edit. OK, now I can select the spine. And now look what happens. Now, he thinks that this is edge printing. But if I click on this button, it will turn it into a spine printing. And you can see the, this is the variations of the books. But now I only want 10 different books. So I can see the 10 different books over here. And I'll save this. This will be the spine. Spine journal, and I'll click OK on this. Let's see that it actually works. I'll preview this. I can see one assortment of the spine, and now I can rotate it and put it in place. Basically, that is it. Uh, it's very simple, uh, very easy. Please, as always, if you have questions, contact me.